Yes, what's up guys? What's going on? Welcome back to the Walino channel and welcome to yet another Chelsea summer news video. I hope you guys have all been having a wonderful day. I've been having a very good day and especially I'm having a good day because our first signing just got unveiled for this summer transfer window and we also have a ton of news to cover today of former players possibly returning to the club and as from you saw from the thumbnail, obviously Tosin Adarebayo getting unveiled by the club in a very good unveiling. Maurizio Sarri expressing his biggest regret of his career so far as a manager at the top level. Lionel Messi's potential return to Argentina all the way till 2026. We'll discuss that a little bit at the end of the video. And also we have some other news of some youngsters that are moving to big clubs this summer. So if you're interested in that, keep watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all the latest Chelsea news and football news in the world, which I will be discussing every single day with you guys. And yeah, let's get right into this Chelsea news. So obviously we have to start off with our new signing. We are Signing FC. That is our name. We are one billion pound bottle jobs, according to Gary Neville, but we have made another top signing, in my opinion. I think this guy will be a top signing because of his mentality. Check this out. So Chelsea unveiled on Twitter and on all their social medias that Tosin is a blue. I think the club will be referring to him as Tosin because Adarab Yayo is just a ridiculously long name to say and to spell. It's a little bit confusing. However, this unveiling is pretty cheeky. I mean, it does have him kind of like James Bond in the unveiling. If you guys go check out the video of his unveiling, he's like in a suit. They have a little, I think they had a Drake song in the background or something. It was pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, Tosin unveiled. And this was what Tosin had to say about his move to Chelsea and why he chose this. So Tosin Adaria Bio Yo, that's how you say it, I guess. I've developed leaps and bounds. I've become a man and established myself as a top Premier League center half. That's why I've joined Chelsea. Being a leader comes to me naturally. It's something that is required of a center half. It's an important responsibility. I want to come here and push the boys on as much as we can. Top mentality by Tosin. This is exactly the type of stuff you want to hear when a player does come into your club. You want him to be a leader. You want him to have experience. You want him to back himself and be confident. Tosin Adarabioyo is a player that encompasses and embodies that to the maximum, in my opinion, from what we've heard from him. Honestly, I'm going to keep saying this. I have not seen this guy play in a game. However, the way staff has been talking about him at Chelsea, such as Enzo Maresca, apparently he was very involved in the recruitment of this player to Chelsea. He knows him from his time in Manchester City's academy. He knows how well he is dealing with the ball under pressure when building out from the back. So this is an Enzo Maresca type of signing. And I'm excited to see how he does for us. But guess what club is not excited to see how he does for us? Guess what club tried to hijack? Check this out. So according to Nazar Kinsella and BBC Sport on Twitter, Manchester United made a late approach to try and hijack Chelsea's Tosin deal. But Tosin kept his word. Very similar to Moises Caicedo's deal that was apparently all done and dusted by David Ornstein. They hit the, door, the Ornstein dagger. Caicedo is going to Liverpool, but Fabrizio Romano held out. He gave the here we go once he went to Chelsea. Moises Caicedo has already kept his word to join Chelsea in last summer. And the same thing is unfolding with Tosin Adarabayo keeping his word towards Chelsea, the club that he desperately wants to play for. And I'm glad we have him, man. It seems like a player that really wants to be at the club, that wants to do well for himself and won't settle for being a backup. He wants to be competitive he wants to earn a starting place in this team and he backs himself to do that and i'm very very pleased to hear that from tosin and a little bit more about his mentality that i just absolutely adore so far based on what he said so he also said i'm here to win i want to win it's as simple as that really i just want to keep working and push the team and the club in the direction we want to go in i'm excited to get going Growing up, Chelsea has always been a club that I've performed well and one that I've had great players and teams to watch. Chelsea won big trophies and long may it continue. That's right. That is right. My boy Tosin. That's the right mentality that we need. That's why we need experienced players, bro. I don't care if it's on a free transfer. Bring them in. The experience helps so much with the squad to raise the standards. That's going to be the main key for me this summer. Can we raise the standards for our squad for next season? Oh, but let's not forget about a player that we might not like universally as a fan base, as a Chelsea player. 
However, he's been big in the recruitment of our big players to the club. Just like with Cole Palmer, check this out. Raheem Sterling spoke to Tosin Adarabioyo before he made his move to Chelsea, which faced immense competition from other clubs. So now we know he was appreciated and sought after by Newcastle, who nearly signed him, by Manchester United, who tried to hijack the deal. But Raheem Sterling apparently was a pretty big part in Tosin coming to Chelsea. Obviously has that Man City link. And yeah, it's interesting how we're slowly but surely collecting these Man City former staff, former players. It's something that I genuinely like to see. I don't care if people call us Manchester City B. I honestly could care less because now we're finally learning from a model that is proven to work and to win titles. If there are two models to follow in world football as of now and for the past 5-10 years, it is the Manchester City model and the Real Madrid model. The reason why is because they produce top quality players when they're brought into the club and they win titles every single year. If we want to be like these clubs and want to get back to the European elite, we have to follow in their direction and I'm glad we low-key are. So check this out about Chelsea being called Man City B. So Ben Jacobs did do an interview with the big uh, Chelsea Twitter account and kind of summarized it in this. So Ben Jacobs said, Chelsea's leadership don't simply want to copy or clone Pep or even replicate Man City's model, even though some fans have amusingly already nicknamed Maresca Diet Pep. However, there is an industry-wide acceptance, including from many within Chelsea, that Manchester City do boast the best in class infrastructure and talent, 100%. 100%. Our top performers, we have gotten from Man City. Cole Palmer, Joe Shields, Romeo Lavia will be very good for us. Trust me, he will be very good for us once he recovers from that injury. Tosin Adarabioyo now. These guys, Raheem Sterling at times has been a top performer for us. We're still waiting to see his best from him. He's kind of one of the exceptions along with Lavia. And Enzo Maresca, of course, we will see how he manages to do for us. But I'm excited to see these new incomers that are former Man City graduates, that are former players and staff of the Man City system, I think they will do well for us. And I'm glad we're shying and going away a little bit from the Arsenal model. Are we really, though? Check this out. So Ben Jacobs also stated in this interview with the Twitter account that Clear Lake and Bowley, which are Chelsea's owners, of course, may appear cutthroat or impatient, but they have ultimately been searching since day one for their version of Mikel Arteta. A football, strategic, and personality fit with a clear playing identity and the ability to bond with the fan base. Nowhere in here does it say trophies. Nowhere in here does it say that wins you titles, that wins you games, that gets you into the elite of European football. This is what concerns me. If you are to copy one model, and I'll keep saying it again and again, copy Real Madrid or copy Manchester City. Do not copy Arsenal. What has he won ever since he's came into the club? Mikel Arteta. Yes, he won the FA Cup against us. Fair enough. Three, four years ago. Since then, two community shields. So how many years will it be now? Four or five years since his, since his arrival to Arsenal. Um, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. He's had big investments. It's simply not good enough by Mikel Arteta. Yes, he did do very well in the league this year. Didn't do well in the Champions League. Fell below expectations. However, this is not the model to copy. We need elite managers, elite standards. Check this out as well. More glazing by the board on Mikel Arteta. So Ben Jacobs also said, Chelsea's owners look at Arsenal now flourishing model. And I've watched Arteta's development. They've seen the All or Nothing documentary, which got, which has got to be some of the most propaganda edited footage to make Arsenal, to make Mikel Arteta look good. And these guys fell for the bait, obviously. They are aware Arteta was under pressure in his first season despite winning the 2020 FA Cup, beating Chelsea 2-1 at Wembley. Although Arsenal have only added two community shields in 2020 and 2023 since, Chelsea still look to the stability and culture at Arsenal as something to try and emulate. What stability are we talking about? Stability is all well and good. Yes, you're qualifying for the UCL. You're getting that money every single season if you do. How many years have they played UCL football under Arteta? One year. What culture has he created at Arsenal? One FA Cup, two Community Shields? I disagree. I disagree with this. I think our model has to follow eliteness. And a, a manager that we did used to have that was honestly of that elite model that I honestly miss very dearly has spoken out about his time at Chelsea. Check this out. It's crazy. 
So Maurizio Sarri got interviewed by Fabrizio Romano, and he said that leaving Chelsea has been my biggest mistake. There was a good basis to stay there and continue at the club. I did a big mistake in that moment. We won the Europa League. The project was great, but I wanted to return to Italy, unfortunately. And there he is holding up the Chelsea shirt. Personally, I loved Maurizio Sarri at Chelsea. He had top standards. Our football was absolutely brilliant. I know a lot of fans were unhappy with how we were playing football. Just wait till we see Enzo Maresca's ball. Apparently, it's very stubborn, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But Maurizio Sarri, what he also did is promoted the youth. He promoted Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who had one of, if not his best Chelsea season to date at the club. Callum Hudson-Odoi was absolutely unreal that season with Maurizio Sarri. He brought in his experienced players like Jorginho, uh, Emerson Palmieri as well, Iguain in the January transfer window, who did help us with a couple goals. But his style of football, he got the best out of Eden Hazard as well. So we could just tell this guy was a top man manager, was passionate for the club without a doubt. We saw how much he was angered after Kepa refused to be substituted in the Community Shield final or in the Carabao Cup final, sorry. And Maurizio Sarri is a manager I'll always remember very dearly for Chelsea. And it kind of warms my heart that he still feels this way about the club, that he regrets leaving Chelsea. But anytime... He would be welcome back. If if I were the owners, man, I would have approached this guy because he truly cares about the club. He wants to do well for us and he misses the club to a certain extent. So very good to hear this about Maurizio Sarri. It's it's nice that some managers appreciate their time at Chelsea. So moving on to a manager who hasn't got the time to appreciate his time at Chelsea or to even start yet. Enzo Maresca, check this out. So Maresca will be judged on whether he can qualify for the Champions League next season. Chelsea's owners and Maresca both believe this is an attainable goal. After all, Chelsea are the fourth best team in the Premier League since Boxing Day. Yes, that statistic is right at the end. Yes, we should hold high standards for Enzo Maresca for Chelsea to obtain this season after our massive investments. Yes, I definitely agree with that. However, this quote right here by Ben Jacobs... And I'm not faulting Ben Jacobs at all. He's just reporting what he's being told. This statement is a 1 plus 2 equals 4. And we know that to not be true. 1 plus 2 does not equal 4. Just because Chelsea finished the season well under a completely different manager to Enzo Maresca, who has been in the Premier League before, who has worked in top flight football for years now, just because he got the best out of these players to a certain extent, at the end of the season and got us to be the fourth best team in the Premier League since Boxing Day does not mean you could assume the same thing for Enzo Maresca. This is why a lot of the fan base has been noting that this board is genuinely delusional. They are living in a delusional state of mind and are crossing their fingers that this fifth manager under their regime will finally be the one that will work, will finally be the one that will take us to stability that they want and to get us back into Champions League football. They're crossing their fingers. They threw all their eggs in one basket. Fair play to them. I mean, it's their money. It's their time. It's our time as well, so we need to be demanding. However, I think this is a case more of blind faith towards Enzo Maresca and a little bit of delusion instead of full trust, if you understand what I'm saying. So I'm going to be expecting the same thing from the squad I want us and I demand us to reach Champions League football. However, if it doesn't manage to happen, this falls on the owners. Because Enzo Maresca took an opportunity that was impossible to refuse by jumping from the championship all the way to Chelsea within a matter of one season. It's not his fault if we do wrong. It's not his fault if we do a wrong job, if we don't achieve our objectives for this season. It's not his fault. Anyone in his position would have done the same exact thing that he did. A five-year contract at Chelsea Football Club. Massive money. Interesting. Interesting to see how the board really sees our upcoming season. I hope it's true. I hope it's true. Now, will Enzo Maresca need some pieces to add to his Chelsea jigsaw for this season? Check this out. So Chelsea are interested in re-signing OGC nieces Marcin Bulka. 
Now, Marcin Bolka, I believe he never played an official game for us. He was our third goalkeeper for quite a while. And this was the case during our time under Mauricio Sarri. I vividly remember him being in the background of the training videos, him being a third option on the bench at times, him being a youngster just learning his trade at Chelsea under the likes of Kepa Riza Balaga, the new signing at the time, and Willy Caballero as well, Rob, Robert Green, or what's his name, the goalkeeper from England. I, I forgot his name. He's pretty old now. He's a commentator. But nevertheless, Bolka, to a certain extent, has developed into a respectable goalkeeper. Will I say I've watched him ever since he's left Chelsea? No, I haven't. But we do have to consider the fact that he did win the Man of the, the Player of the Month award, I believe, in September for League 1. So if you win a Player of the Month award, that means you're doing something very well for your club. Obviously, I believe he is a Polish international, if I'm not mistaken. Would I take him back at Chelsea? I think he's 24, 25 years old. Yeah, why not? If he's a ball-playing goalkeeper, he's been at the club before, he understands the Chelsea standards, why not give him that opportunity? Why not? I wouldn't be opposed to a Marcin Bolka return to Chelsea. What I would be opposed to is this. So Chelsea and Tottenham are among the clubs who have shown an interest in signing Kylian Mbappe's brother Ethan this summer. Is this joke ever going to end? Is this joke... This guy is 16 years old, man. I mean, you're actually joking. Clubs and media and the press saying Chelsea are having financial issues while we're spending hundreds of millions on these unproven young talents. Yes, he's related to Mbappe, but he's not the same player as Kylian Mbappe. Give him time to develop at least first. God, I, I just know something like this is going to happen. I just know we're going to get two, three more youngsters by the end of this window. But that's how it is at Chelsea these days. Talking about another youngster heading to London, this is the case with Luis Guillerme. Check this out. So Fabrizio Romano posted an exclusive that West Ham verbally agreed a deal to sign Brazilian talent Luis Guillerme. Agreement done with Palmeiras pending medicals to take place in England next week. 23 million euro fixed fee, 7 million in add-ons, 20% sell-on clause to Palmeiras. Final steps then. Here we go soon. I do think this guy will join uh, West Ham immediately. I believe he's 18 years old now, so he should have no issues with that. But the Palmeiras raid has been completed. It's absolutely been completed. That club has been dismantled of all its young talents. However, they're probably the richest club in Brazil right now. Endrick being sold to Real Madrid for a heavy fee. Esteval Willian, their biggest sale to us, who they absolutely fleeced. Um, and now Luis Guillerme. So do I know exactly anything about this guy? I do not. The only player I truly know about is Esteval Willian and Endrick. But exciting to see, exciting to see this fresh crop of Brazilian talent emerging into European football once again. But something, some player, I don't know if you guys know him. His name is Lionel Messi. Obviously not a fresh talent. He's been around the block quite a few times. But this is what he said about the 2026 World Cup. So he said, on being part of the squad for the World Cup in 2026, it depends on how I feel, how I am physically and being realistic with myself. There's still a lot of time in quotes, a lot and a little because it goes by quickly. But there's still some time and he needs to see how his body feels by that time. But you never know in football. That's essentially what he said when I read the tweet. Messi. I don't understand. Maybe this is why I'm not the greatest footballer of all time. But this guy's mentality is unbelievable. Everyone always talks about Cristiano Ronaldo's mentality being the best in the world. Lionel Messi, after winning a World Cup with Argentina... Coming to the MLS, he could retire, he could relax, set his feet on the table, and just appreciate his last years in football, and just take a break from international football. This guy's mentality shines through once again. He he wants more. He wants more. This is what the top performers in the world do. They achieve something, and they're not content with it. They want to keep making history. They want to keep breaking records. They want more in their accolades and fair play to Messi man because he did say in this little interview that age is just a number age is a factor but at the end of the day it's just a number and in the case of Lionel Messi why not keep playing why not enjoy your football for another world cup if you're up to it if he feels right why not get Lionel Messi for yet another world cup 
does he have to rely on his pace that much anymore? No, he's adapted his play style. And honestly, it'd be great. It'd be great to see Messi in the United States for the 2026 World Cup. But we'll see. We'll see what the future has to hold for Messi and for us as well. But other than that, guys, that is all the news we have for today. Uh, I believe England are playing right now. I don't know what the score is right now. I just saw they were losing to Iceland, though, which is absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, that's it for the news. Make sure to subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. And peace.